video and in this video we're going to be looking at struct in Z. So what are structs? Um, struct is simply a collection of different or similar kind of data types. So you can think of structs as arrays but they can contain different types of um, you know value or data. So for example if I wanted to have a maybe if I wanted to have a structure where that allows me to store my name and maybe my age then I can actually do this in an array and to do this I could store this in two different variables so I could do name is a day bio for example and then I will store my age to be equal to 24 or whatever so this is actually valid but what if i wanted to store these two things in one structure so how would i you know is, is that even possible is that something that i would be able to do and yes it's actually something that is possible using structs and i'm going to show you how to do that right now so the first thing we need to do is in order for you to be able to create um structs in zig you need to understand how structs are created i guess so structs are actually first class data types in zig which means you create them the same way you create any other kind of variable but the only difference with structs is that they're generally immutable so you have to create them with this const construct so const is simply saying that this whatever you're trying to create and you're annotating with const you're saying that you want that to be a constant all right and so you have to give the variable a name like i said strokes are first class types in zig so i, I gotta say like user so if that's what i if, if this is like the name so also speaking of naming rules in zig you generally want to give your struct names uh, you want to start it with this capital letter so the first character is going to be like an uppercase and then the rest of the characters is going to be um, you know so basically I think it's called Pascal case so if, for example if I wanted to have something like user info then I'm going to have like user info so you can see each word the first letter of each word is capitalized so user the U in user is capitalized and the I in info is also capitalized so I could have this user info and then I would I would say that I want to create a struct so I type the struct keyword and then I have this um, opening and closing color brace. So this is to say that I've just created myself a struct. And this is how you create it. So you create a constant for a struct, you, you pass in the name of the struct and then you create the struct itself. So now that we know how to create structs and how to give struct names, so just to complete what I was saying about struct names, you cannot name a struct, you cannot give a struct, uh, the same rules that applies to creating variables and functions apply to creating structs. So for example, if you want to use the the um, at notation, so if you have like, um, if you wanted to use like the string lead type, whatever notation, this also works because it works the same for variables, it works the same for functions, and so the same thing works for uh, what's this? Okay, I guess I have to like do this by hand. So, uh, right. So this is what this is one of the things that comes with learning like a new text editor. So right. So you you can use um, the same rule. So uppercase, lowercase, underscores. Those are all valid for creating. Um, identify those are all valid identifiers for creating uh, names for your variables so it, it's the same thing for structs and also talking about the visibility modifier so the visibility modifier is the same for variables or functions where if you have pub at the beginning then you can use this for you can use this struct and the definition or whatever inside of other modules so that simply means inside of other files or so whatever files that imports this file would have access to this struct if the struct is not pub then that is not going to happen okay it's not going to have access to that 
So now that we have created our structs, let's start thing. So what can we put inside of this struct? Now, a struct in itself, just defining a struct like this is empty and it doesn't do anything because it doesn't have any fields, it doesn't have any properties, and it doesn't have any functions inside of it. So this is how you're going to be, uh, this is how you're going to be assigning properties to your functions. You can just do something like name. So you can see we have the identifier, which is just like a variable, but this is local to the struct. So this is like a member or a field of the struct. So I define a name, I put a colon, and then I see that this is going to be a, a string. So, it, you know, a const array of um, u 8 which is a string. And I also want to say like age is going to be a U32. I use U32 because it's supposed to be like an unsigned 32-bit integer. I could use U8 if I want, that's pretty, that's absolutely fine, but hey. <coughs> So now I have created two fields. So now if I wanted to if I wanted to instantiate this struct, which means if I want to use the struct in my program, what I can do now is to do a uh, const user and then I could do like a user info and then I could specify the name. So you can see this is exactly how you would instantiate a struct. So basically what I'm saying here is I'm getting uh, I'm creating this struct, okay, I'm filling in all of the fields and, you know, whatever. So, I have the name, which is going to be Atebayo, and I have the age to be, no, that's not, a, that's not a string, that's a, that's an integer. So, I've just created myself a user. If you want to see what kind of one and this is showing, then you see we have one use local constant. So, yeah. So now that we have created ourselves the user, what can we do with it? So we could, for example, do std load info, which is which is going to allow us to see um, the values that we have for the user. So for example, we could print out the user itself, and we could, of course, run this and. This should basically print out the user struct and whatever values that are contained within. So you can see we have user info and then we have um, this array. So this wasn't properly converted to a string. It was just printed out as the as a byte array, which is fine. And then we have the age. So this is exactly how you would um, instantiate a struct. Of course, we could also have um, default so we could have default members of a struct so in case we want to just like for example I could have uh, undefined or whatever so this we actually have an undefined type but this is a string so let me use something else that is a little less confusing so not defined for example so if we don't want to define like a name for the struct uh, for this user then we could just have like a default name there so now if I if I if I choose to delete this, so if I choose to just delete what we have here, I right there we go, and I save this and I do zigbuild run. You're gonna find that this code is still gonna compile and it's still gonna run, and of course you see a longer string because we have a longer um, name here. So we can have default um, values, default um, fields for structs also we could also have functions inside of structs which is basically called bound functions oh by the way um, there's no way to specify visibility modifiers for structs so everything in your struct is going to be public in zig so you have to keep that in mind so bound functions are simply functions that are a part of uh, that are bound to a particular struct um, in order for you to be able to see that I gotta show you what I'm trying to say so here I'm going to have a function that <clears throat> is going to make me a new user okay so this init function is going to create a new user so I'm, I gotta pass in the name that I want to use and I also gotta pass in the age and so this is going to give me a new user info which I can return with this and 
the name is name, the page is page, just like that. Now, instead of creating my own user info like this, what I can do is to just have user info, um, user info the init, and I could pass in the name, and I could pass in the age. Sorry, the age is not consistent because I'm not even sure of what my age is. Anyway, so that's that. And now this is not a bound function. This is just a normal function that returns. That takes in two arguments and returns a user. All right. Uh, just to make sure that this works, let's just run Zig build run, and you can see nothing changes. Uh, that's because I didn't save this. Uh, it's supposed to like build the project and yeah, exactly. So now you see that we have um, the same thing here, or at least something similar. So now, how do you create a bound function? So if I want to say print the name, uh, just the name of this user out. What I can do is do pop on print name, for example. Now, this function is not going to return anything, it's just going to print something to the console. So, we're going to have um, the user info. So, we have, to, we have to tell this structure that this function that we want is bound to this struct so that it can access all of the values inside of the fields. So how we can do that is we're going to have the self, which is going to be um, like the way we reference the variable itself. And then we're going to have user uh, info. And what I'm going to do is scd.log.info, uh, put the required types, and then we're going to have the self the name. Of course, we need to annotate that this is a string, so we do that. And oh no, what am I doing? Right, I save that, I run, and we haven't printed anything. <laughs> right, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to do that now. So user print name. So this is exactly what bound functions do, as you can see. So what, I, what what bound functions allow me to do is to just use the dot notation to call the function. So as you can see, I have this print name function defined in the user info namespace, and I have the first argument to be user info itself. So I can call user the print name, and that should work. Also, um, what is this? Get out. Uh, so also what I can do is I can use a built-in code at this to refer to this exact struct, okay? I can use at this to refer to this exact struct and say that instead of having to refer to the struct by name, so if you want, if when we start working with things like generics and stuff and such, then you're gonna see how useful this is gonna be. This um, at this, which is going to allow us to refer to the struct that were uh, the namespace, which is this struct that we're currently under. And if I do the build run, you're gonna see that nothing is gonna change and everything is still gonna work as expected. And we're gonna get the name just as we expect. So this function is bound to this struct, and that's why we call it bound functions. So we can also have other kinds of structs. We could also have packed structs and we could have extant structs. So packed structs are simply structures that allow you to control um, the memory layout. So for example, if I, if I annotate this struct as packed, then it's basically going to say that um, you know, so instead of the compiler trying to do like all this padding, adding padding to your structs and things like that, it's going to completely like disregard the padding and all, and it's just going to store everything sequentially in memory and stuff like that. So this is basically useful for things like people that work with things like OpenGL and storing, I don't know, shaders, shader stuff and all. So that's what patch struct is for. And, um, well... Yeah, so I believe that's it. Um, so external structs are structs that basically you want to conform to the CABI. So what do I mean by the CABI? Um, so you know, C programs basically. So any program written in the C uh, programming language uses the CABI for function calling, 
and, and you know whatever so if you if you have an instance trucks then whatever members that are part of the structure is going to also be able to work with so for example if i export this program to work with um so, so if i export like i create a library that uses the structure and i mark my struct struct as extern then when i want to use um the structure in say c there is not going to be an issue because all of these structures are going to be compatible with each other. So that's basic. That basically allows um, some form of compatibility with C, uh, because by default, Zig does things different with the way it handles structures and you know functions and all. So for example, Zig has all this error return types, some tagged unions, and other kind of stuff like that that C doesn't support. So you know when you add extern then it turns up uh, it, it turns on the compatibility checks for the struct and doesn't allow you to use whatever zig feature that c doesn't have you know at least um for example maybe for the return types and whatnot anyway that would be it for this video about structs and yeah i will see you in the next video Bye.